going on guys? Welcome to Garage 23. And this week we're going to be taking a little trip down to Handyman Corner and we're going to be building our very own subwoofer box to complete the sound system in the Bluebird. So let's get started. All right, so the piece that we're going to be putting into our subwoofer box, which is the most important part of any sound system, is the subwoofer. And for this, we didn't go out and buy a brand new one. This is just something that's been laying around in the shed for the past six years. <laughs> probably more. Well, this is probably older than some of you guys, I don't know. But yeah, it's a Rockford Fosgate P1. It's actually only 150 watt RMS, 300, 300 watt max. So this is kind of small for our amplifier. <laughs> so yeah, this might uh, blow up a little sooner rather than later, but better than nothing. And it'll be nice in the, the short while that it lives. No, but uh, we can tune down the amp a little bit to, to compensate for that. So it should be fine. For the subwoofer box, I was gonna go out and buy one, but I was looking around and they're pretty expensive. I mean, they're like a whole 20, even $30. And you used to be able to buy a car for that. So <laughs> yeah, I figured we should just make our own. And to do that, we're gonna be busting out some of the old work, woodworking tools like bandsaw, circular saw, table saw. Yeah, we gotta engage our safety squints and put on our flannel. Gotta figure that out. <laughs> All right, so first thing we gotta do is figure out the placement for our subwoofer. And from there, we can take some measurements and start designing a box. So let's see where we want to put this thing. Pretty much the only, the only options we have would be like on the side here. I know a lot of people will take the carpet out and kind of wedge it into the quarter panel there, but I have the spare jack in there, so I don't really want to take up that area. And then the other option would be on this firewall back here, but we have this pass through window back here because unfortunately the Ultima didn't have fold down rear seats, which kind of sucks. We just had this little fold down armrest, which I, I think in the ads it, it advertised as being able to carry skis or something, which yeah, that's, that's useful. I actually use it to carry like 10 foot sticks of DOM tubing and stuff like that. So it's kind of useful, I don't know. But yeah, I don't want to cover that. So I either want to put it to the left or the right. And we already got kind of stuff going on on the left here. So I think on the right side is going to be where, where we're going to put it. And we're probably going to face it toward the seat just to kind of hide it a bit. So now we got to measure what exactly that space is. And we live in America. So we're going to use the good old American foot. <laughs> And that's about 1.2 feet of width, one and a half feet of height. And we're probably gonna make it uh, match up with this pillar here for the depth. And that's about one foot deep. So yeah, let's draw something up and see what it looks like. All right, so we need to draw out the profile of the box for a couple of reasons. One being to check if the depth of the design that we want is gonna be enough to actually fit the subwoofer. And also we wanna cut out that profile and we wanna test if that's gonna be able to fit in the trunk. Like if we're gonna be able to get the box as a whole like in the trunk, because that's the last thing you wanna do is build a box and realize that it doesn't fit in the opening of your trunk. I'm gonna draw out the depth that I measured out for the bottom and the top since this is gonna be a wedge shape. All right, so that's roughly the, the profile of the box that we want. Now, we need to measure how deep the subwoofer is. And it's about five and a quarter. So we need to check if we have at least that in this box. And we have five and a quarter all the way up to there. And it should work. Might be a little tight though, but we'll see. The other thing we got to do is figure out the volume of the inside of the box, because for this specific subwoofer, they recommend about 0.6 cubic feet of uh, internal volume for this for a sealed box. So we need to try and get close to that. Um, you can always go a little, little over, a little under. It's not like that crucial, but you you want to stay close to their recommendations. To do that, we need to figure out the volume of the box, you know, as a three dimensional object. And for that, it's length times width times height. And to make it a little easier, since this is the wedge shape, 
what you can do is just double like the shape to make it a square. So effectively making it, this is a four inch side and this side is 10 inches. So we'd make it 14. So that would make it a square 14 by 15. And then the width is gonna be 13 inches. So it's basically 14 times 15 times 13. And so it's 14 times 15 times 13. And that's your, your cubic inches of the in internal space of the box. But we, we doubled that to make it a little easier so we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have to make it like complicated because it's like a triangle shape. So basically we just divide that in half. So divided by two and that's 1,365 cubic inches. And now we divide this by 1,728 which that's the amount of inches in a cubic foot. So what we get after is 0.78. So that's our, our cubic feet. So that's obviously not 0.6 cubic feet, but that's pretty close. And considering we can't really make it any narrower, uh, I think that's what we're going to have to go with. Yeah, it's hard to really judge, like, if it's actually going to fit in here. It's just this very corner that we might run into issues. But if we do, we can just extend this just a little bit more and we should be fine. So now we can cut this shape out and go test it in the trunk and see if it's gonna fit in there. And from there we can cut out the rest of the pieces and start assembling it, I guess. Inspect your dog, how does it look? Yes. Okay, so now we have our profile cut out and we want to check if we're going to be able to get the box in here. And to do that, you want to hold it kind of as if you were holding the box itself. Obviously, if you just put it in here like this, that's not going to help you at all. So you want to hold it this way and see if you can get it in there. And these cars, we have like tons of room. These things had so much cargo space, but some other cars, like I know some European cars like Audis or BMWs have like a much smaller trunk opening. So you might have a ton of room back here, but your actual like trunk opening might not work, you know? So it's just something to keep in mind. But we want this about there. And yeah, that looks pretty good. So that's about what we want. All right, for the next part, we're going to be using our table saw. That's going to help us keep our cuts nice and square. So anytime you use a table saw, you want to count your fingers before and after. That'll let you know if you need to go looking through the sawdust. <laughs> but I got this measured out to about 12 inches. That's going to be the top and bottom side of our box. So let's get to cutting. Plugging it in might help. So now if we did it right, this should add up to the 13 inches we just cut. It looks pretty good. All right. Looks like we, we did pretty good here. And we even kept all our finger. Uh, I'll be right back. All right, so now we're just about ready to start gluing this together. And we're just gonna use some standard wood glue. And then. We're just gonna glue it and then nail it together and hope it works. <laughs> now we can cut the excess off of these pieces and then cut our top piece, then the circle for the subwoofer. 
And then we can make an even bigger mess with glue and then we'll be almost done. All right, got a couple screws holding it in. So now let's see if it fits in the spot that we wanted to put it. Like a glove. <laughs> That'll work. All right, now that we know that it fits, we can go ahead and do some of the finishing touches, like install our speaker wire terminal, and then we're gonna be wrapping it with this nice carpet felt material stuff that looks like the carpet in the trunk. So hopefully it'll blend right in. So first we gotta mark out the hole for this and the camera lens looks like about the right diameter. All right, now I think I left my hole saw that's this size at John's house. So we're gonna have to use the next size that I have, which is, I don't know, two inch or something. And then we'll go ahead and clean up the edges with the jigsaw. Not ideal, but you gotta work with what you got. All right, now we're pretty much ready to upholster the box. And for this, we're gonna be using 3M Super 77 spray adhesive. This was pretty good. You just gotta be a little patient and wait for it to tack up or else if you try to do it too quickly, it's just not gonna work. It's gonna be too not sticky. So be sure to give it a few minutes just to tack up to where it's, it's not like completely dry, but it's just tacky to your finger. And for the carpet stuff, I think we're gonna end up trying to roll the box around the carpet, see if that works. Cause that'll give us the most flat surfaces and probably give us the least amount of seams to work with. Let's see if that works. And for the adhesive, I'm gonna spray some on the box and on the carpet. The can says it covers about 182 square feet on it. So this should be more than enough to do this little box because this is, I don't know, probably four or five square feet or something like that. All right, so it's been a few minutes and as you can see, our glue is pretty tacky. <laughs> so let's go ahead and roll the speaker box onto it. Just go ahead and smooth it out a bit. All right, it looks pretty good. So we're basically gonna be doing that same process on all the sides and we're gonna be like rolling it and trying to cover all the sides. And then we'll deal with the seams on the sides at the end. So hopefully it comes out good.
All right, so now we'll, since we already put glue on when we were putting the whole box together, the back side of this and the hole itself already has glue on it. So we just got to cut some little pizza slices into the fabric. And then just fold it back around. Just like that. Kind of looks like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, so now hopefully with this added material around the, the perimeter, it doesn't interfere with our speaker and stuff. So. Let's test that out. It's a little snug, but it's pretty good. Oh yeah, that's perfect. So now we gotta drill some pilot holes and then put our screws in place and then the trim ring. All right, so now we gotta install our speaker terminal and I just got a piece of speaker wire, put some spade terminals on it and then this is gonna to connect to our subwoofer. So this is gonna go in there. Then our wire is gonna go into the subwoofer. So like that. Then we can drill our pilot holes for the screws. Now we just put it in the car. All right, finished product. That's pretty nice. Don't look at the little gaps here. Look at this side. That side came out nice. And we got our speaker wire that we ran uh, beforehand. Now we just measure about how much we're gonna need which so about there all right now that we got everything connected and got the subwoofer more or less dialed in let's give it a test run I think that's going to do it for this episode of Handyman Corner. And that pretty much concludes our stereo upgrade on our Altima. We got the joying head unit, touchscreen, and got our Infinity component front speakers, our six and a half rear speakers, our 700 watt five channel amp, the wiring, which is a bit of a headache, and finally our 10 inch subwoofer and our custom little sealed enclosure that matches our carpet it perfectly might I add so yeah I think that about wraps it up and remember if the girls don't find you cute they should at least find you crafty see you guys what's going on guys welcome to garage 23 and for this week's uh, yeah. and for this week's second <laughs> Like 
So now hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this added material around the, the diameter doesn't, doesn't make my camera girl fall over and die. <laughs>